This is the Tuscan Reader Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew. In this episode, Expanded Universe book reviews for Darth Bane, Path of Destruction, and Shatterpoint. We're going to talking about what books are coming soon, plus a discussion of Shatterpoint with the hosts of the Red 5 Reviews YouTube channel and the host of the Star Wars Legends Podcast. So sit tight and enjoy the show. <laughs> In this first segment, we're going to be talking about Star Wars book news. That's what we're all about here at the Tuscan Reader. Books. I love to read. Reading is so fun. It's an escape from reality. What better way to escape than with an adventure in the Star Wars galaxy? It's awesome. We've got the Expanded Universe, or Legends canon. You know, A lot of people just like to stick with Expanded Universe, but it's got a re- rebrand on it called Legends. They've, they've re- st- they're starting a reprint now. And they call it the Essential Legends Collection, which is awesome. It's beautiful. We're going to get into that stuff. And we've got the Disney Canon, uh, which needs a cooler name. We can't call it the Disney Canon. It's awful. I don't know if there is an official name. I have not heard it. But there's got to be something. Come on, people. we got to come up with a name for it. What? It can't be Expanded Universe. I'm not going to call it Expanded Galaxy. That's stupid. Um, the Further Stories of Star Wars. <laughs> well, that's awful, too. I don't know. Well, there's got to be something out there. We got we gotta gotta give it a cool name, Disney Canon. Ugh. Sounds ugly, but in recent news, we had some reprints that are now available everywhere you can purchase books. In most cases, uh, we've got Shatterpoint, Path of Destruction, and Heir to the Empire. Later on in this episode, we're going to review Shatterpoint and we're going to review Darth Bane, Path of Destruction, Book One of the Bane trilogy. I'm so happy these books are now available for everybody to get. I've got all three of them now on my shelf. I'm thankful to Del Rey for sending these out, for me to read them and review them for you guys to talk about these. Gorgeous covers. They look incredible. Yeah, the pictures look nice on the internet when you see the, the book covers, but when you actually have them in your hand, it's just a glorious piece of artwork. I love it. But we've got some upcoming books. We've got some new reprints. Wave 2 of the Essential Legends Collection, and they are coming to us September 7th. And in this Wave 2, we've got The Rule of Two, which is book two of the Darth Bane trilogy. It's written by Drew Carpation, with the cover art by Simon Goynard, which is also the artist of book one, Path of Destruction. We also have Dark Force Rising, which is book two of the original Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, with a cover art by Tracy Ching, which also did the artwork for Heir to the Empire, also by Timothy Zahn. And then we also get Last Command, book three of the original Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, art also by Tracy Ching. So that's awesome. And then there is a fourth book in Wave 2 that we're getting, not just the book, reprint, but an audiobook, an unabridged audiobook, and it's going to be Rogue Squadron by Michael A. Stackpole, the cover art by Doily, I believe that's how you'd say that, but yes, the the Rogue Squadron unabridged audiobook will be narrated by Mark Thompson. I'm very excited about all of these reprints. They're going to be fantastic. The covers are out there on the internet, you know, Twitter. I'll, I'll retweet those photos. I enjoy them. I think they're gorgeous. Um, but what am I most excited about in Wave 2? What book do I think that I just can't live without, that I think is going to be the most essential in this Wave 2? Well, that's kind of a that's a loaded question. <laughs> all of them are essential. We need them all. Um, but I'm most excited for Rogue Squadron by Michael A. Stackpole. I haven't experienced this story yet. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm most likely going to listen to it and trade off and read it. I like I, I personally, I find it kind of cheating to just do the audiobook if and you can't call it reading. It's like, oh, yeah, I listen to the book. But, you know, that's just me. You could say you read it, but you listen to it. I'm not going to judge you. But uh, for me, I'll be swapping back and forth, reading, listening, reading, listening. Uh, but what am I most, um, I mean, not, not most not looking forward to, but what could I care less about uh, in this wave? Probably, you know, the, the, the Thrawn books, to be honest with you. I just... I wasn't a big fan of the original Thrawn trilogy. I read them a long time ago. And of course, I'm going to be giving them a reread with these releases. I, I promise you, I'm going to get all three of these. I'm going to read. I've already got first book right here behind me, Heir to the Empire. I'm going to read it. 
Again, I'm going to get a review for you here at the Tuscan Reader, along with Dark Force Rising and Last Command. I'm really looking forward to rereading those and giving my review. And maybe maybe my thoughts have changed. Maybe I'll enjoy it a lot better the second time I've read it, because, you know, such a long time ago when I did read it, I really don't remember much, but, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, for the canon news, we've got some recent releases of uh, The High Republic Wave 2, which was The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott and Race to Crash Point Tower by Daniel Jose Older. Those are now available for purchase wherever you can get your books. Uh, I have reviewed them here on the Tuscan Reader. But Wave 2 isn't over yet, and we still have more to come. Uh, here at the end of July, July 27th, there's going to be Out of the Shadows by Justina Ireland. And I have been reading it. Not done with it yet, but I'm like 40% through it, and I could just say... I am not I am not liking it. I'm not having fun with it. It's it's looking bad, guys, to be honest with you. Um the YA books in the High Republic are just kind of a dud for me so far. I mean maybe maybe out of the shadows will get better. I don't know. Still got a long way to go, but right now it's like really hard to get through. It's more of a chore at this point, and uh that sucks. I mean, Claudia Gray, one of my favorite Star Wars authors. She's really good at YA books, but Into the Dark, that was released in Wave 1, worst book of the, the series so far, meaning of the High Republic. So, uh, yeah, I don't know about this one either, Out of the Shadows. But you can look forward to that review coming sometime, when as soon as I get done with it, I'll review it. So look look forward to that one. Um, hopefully it's not going to be a rant. I feel like it's going to be, I feel in my heart that it's going to be more of a rant than a review. And I don't want that. I don't want to hate these books. I want to love them because I'm spending my valuable time reading them. You know? Who wants to read something just to crap on it? That's stupid. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. But there's other books coming out. More High Republic stuff. More stuff that's not High Republic, which is cool. I'm glad that we're getting more books that uh, are outside of the same era that we've been getting this year. Um, but Wave 2... Or Wave 3, I don't know if it's still going to be, maybe 2.1, Wave 3, like I said, I don't, I don't know. 9-7, September 7th, along with the reprints that are coming out on September 7th, we've got two other books. Edge of Balance, it's a manga, or manga, I don't know how you want to say it, I don't care how you say it, I usually, I usually say exactly what I'm saying now, manga or manga, because I don't know. It's uh, written by Shima Shania. Shima Shinya and Justina Ireland. Sorry, I butcher names here all the time. It's illustrated by Mizuki Sakabara. Yeah, names. The other book on 9-7 is a collection of holiday stories, Life Day Treasury by George Mann and Kevin Scott. So they're going to be doing like Life Day stuff now, a Christmas in Star Wars. Uh, the cover looks... Christmassy, it's got red, green, and gold. It's snowy looking, you know, like Christmas and Star Wars. In the following month, October, October 12th, there's going to be another Del Rey novel that drops. It's going to be hitting shelves. And it is Ronin. It's a Visions novel, which is a Disney Plus original series. It's like a anime style show. I'm not really sure. News has dropped. If you want to look that up, you can. I'm not real heavy into anime for one and two. I don't have Disney Plus anymore, so not watching the shows. But this is going to tie into that Visions show, but hopefully not too closely because, you know, I don't have Disney Plus, so I'm not going to be watching it, and I want to enjoy these stories by just reading the book. Ronin, a Visions novel, will be written by Emma Miko Kandon. Now, I have the Del Rey Star Wars Twitter pulled up because they released a little... A little thing about this book, uh, and I'm going to read that to you now. It says, A mysterious former Sith wanders the galaxy in this stunning Star Wars tale, an original novel inspired by the world of the duel from the Star Wars Visions animated anthology. Now, the Jedi are the most loyal servants of the Empire. Now, this book is causing chaos all over the internet because it's not actually going to be considered canon, meaning all of the books that I have behind me on my canon shelf it doesn't really have a place there. This is like their first non... Well, it's not their first. Never mind. There are some other books that have, they have released that they did say aren't really canon. So this isn't the first time it's happened. 
But I guess as a novel, like an actual, its own story, this is the first time. So that's going to be interesting and it's causing chaos. People that hate Disney are like, haha, they're rebooting canon already. Now, honestly, I don't think that's the case. They're just exploring new things, new ideas, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe they are trying to do a soft reboot of the entire thing, um, but I doubt it. I think they just want to have different history, like lore that they're trying to develop of like, oh yeah, when this might have happened or that might have happened, something like that. I, I don't know. But the book does sound interesting. I mean, listen to this summary. The Jedi are the most loyal servants of the Empire. Two decades ago, Jedi clans clashed in service to feuding lords. Sickened by this endless cycle, a sect of Jedi rebelled, seeking to control their own destiny and claim power in service of no master. They called themselves Sith. I mean, the most interesting thing to me so far is the Empire. I mean, this it kind of sounds like Old Republic type stuff from the Legends canon. But, I mean, this isn't going to be considered Legends. So some people have been confused. Like, oh, is this part of the Expanded Universe now? The continuing U Expanded Universe? No. No, they are not. This is not the Expanded Universe. This is just a different outside of canon type story. So um, don't confuse this with Expanded Universe. It goes on to say the Sith Rebellion failed, succumbing to the infighting and betrayal, and the once rival lords unified to create an empire. But even an empire at peace is not free from violence. Hmm. So, so far, now we've got two empires uh, taking place. Far from the edge of the Outer Rim, one former Sith wanders, accompanied only by a faithful droid and the ghost of a less civilized age. He carries a lightsaber, but claims lineage to no Jedi clan and pledges allegiance to no lord. Little is known about him, including his name, for he never speaks of his past nor his regrets. His history is as guarded as the red blade of destruction he carries sheathed at his side. So yeah, he's got a lightsaber sheathed at his side. As you can see on the cover, um, if you pull up an image, it's like a sword sheath. Like he pulls the blade out of the sheath. It's weird. Um, maybe this is just like the old technology. You have to have the blade charged or something in this sheath. I don't know. And the summary is going to close out with, As the galaxy's perpetual cycle of violence continues to interpret his self-imposed exile, and he is forced to duel an enigmatic bandit claiming the title of Sith, it becomes clear that no amount of wandering will ever let him outpace the specters of his former life. So, interesting tale. I'm looking forward to reading it. You know, I'm interested in reading all of these books. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. Uh, that's not the case for everything. Um, but... We'll see what happens. We'll see if it fails, if it continues to confuse more people. I mean, I couldn't believe the backlash, the uh, outrage that was taking place on the internet with this story. Um, and, oh, how Disney's failing and Del Rey's just, they're, they're confusing themselves. It's like, come on, guys. They're just making another book that's outside of canon, which if you don't want to read it, don't read it. You know, leave people alone <laughs> that want to read it. No point in bullying people nonsense so in november man we got two books coming in november first one november 2nd Ugh, i am not happy about this one <laughs> it's uh the third book in padme trilogy queen's hope by ek johnston man i am not looking forward to reading that but i'll do it i'll read it i'll read it for you folks people out there like it people like the padme books for some reason <laughs> i'm not judge i'm not here to judge anybody i'm not judging you if you like a book and i hate it it's like i hope that you wouldn't judge me for reading a book and loving it while you hated it it's all different tastes for different folks so queen's hope by ek johnston comes out november 2nd so thankfully i have several months before that book comes out but november 16th we have thrawn ascendancy lesser evil by timothy zahn so, book three in the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy. Now, most likely that one's going to get the audiobook for, uh, by Mark Thompson. Mark Thompson narrated the first two Star Wars uh, Thrawn Ascendancy books, so most likely he was going to be doing the third. I mean, come on. Uh, so, with the canon books coming out, what am I most excited for and which could I care less about? So, I mean, let's face it, I'm going to be reading all of it, in the book that I don't, you know, want to read. I'm going to read it. 
Uh, but the one I'm most excited for in the canon stuff is probably going to be Thrawn Ascendancy, Lesser Evil. Because it's the third book in a trilogy by Timothy Zahn. I mean, I gotta, you know, get the, uh, get the last book and figure out how this all comes to a close, right? Gotta know how everything ties together with Thrawn. So that's a given. I mean, that's, that's gonna be the most exciting one in these upcoming books. So, what could I care less about? That's obvious. Queen's Hope... Ugh, I do not like the author. Um, of course, no hard feelings to anybody. Seriously, I don't hate anybody. I don't like the author's writing style. I don't like the author's books that she's written in canon. I don't. I don't like how, uh, I guess it came out that she ignored the editor when she was writing Queen's Peril. Um, that's all on Twitter. She, I think she even admitted, like, yeah, I ignored my editor. It's like, well, huh. Uh, I'm surprised they still went with it because it was garbage, in my opinion. So I'm not looking forward to Queen's Peril. I mean, ah, Queen's Hope. <laughs> I can't get Queen's Peril out of my head. It's just it's a PTSD from, you know, all the, the the bloody mess that happened to that book. But anyway, let's move on to the next segment, book reviews. So we've got two of the three Essential Legend Collection books that we're going to be reviewing in this episode. Path of Destruction and Shatterpoint. At a later episode, we will be doing Heir to the Empire. But I wanted to get these two done. And later on, at the end of the episode, stick around because after we review Shatterpoint, I'm going to have a full spoiler discussion with the hosts of the Legends podcast and Red 5 Reviews. It's going to be a fun conversation about Shatterpoint, so stick around and enjoy that conversation. So let's go ahead and get into the first review. Star Wars Path of Destruction was written by New York Times best-selling author Drew Carpation. Now, this this tale takes place a little over a thousand years before the events of A New Hope. It takes place during the Old Republic era, and it's book one of the Darth Bane trilogy. Now, we've got Dessel. He's a miner on the world of Apatros. He's got a hard, miserable life. In his youth, he was always picked on by his peers, and his father was abusive. Now, as he grew older, he developed a sixth sense, which gifted him with quick reflexes and the ability to see actions before they happened. Dessel really wanted to get off of Apatros, but he just couldn't afford to. He was broke, he was in debt, he didn't really care for politics either. Uh, He was in a pub one night, having a conversation with some folks, and he started to complain about the Republic, and some Republic troops actually overheard him and did not like what they were saying. So later on, uh, at night, in an alleyway, they jump Dessel. And well, it ends in some death, and Dessel, he's scared for his life. Uh, Now he's going to be wanted by the Republic, so he goes and signs up with a Sith recruiter and is smuggled off-world. So Dessel finally gets his break. He's off of Apatros. So Dessel, he's now part of this Sith military, and he climbs the ranks rather quickly. He winds up at the Sith Academy to become part of the Brotherhood of Darkness, and there Dessel is reborn as Bane. Drew Carpation did one heck of a job with the characters in this book. I mean, Dessel's rise to power to become Bane was a very satisfying and emotional journey. And what makes the story and the characters so great was that there were struggles. Bane has struggles. He's not some superhuman who is unstoppable. He wasn't undefeatable. He has weaknesses, and he goes through hard trials, very hard trials. The character Githany, she was great. She was a fallen Jedi, and she was very power-hungry and very untrustworthy. Uh, The chemistry between Bane and Githany was fantastic. It was organic. It felt real. I can't stress how awesome uh, Drew Carpation is as an author. Uh, He kept the story unpredictable. He did such an incredible job with the the character development, like I said, the plot points. Everything was so clear. The dialogue, nearly perfect. The story was ultimately a tragedy, which is something that I really love. I love a good tragedy uh, in books, that is. But uh, we had this young man who's down on his luck, abused by his father, made fun of by those around him. He wanted to get off of his home world to start a new life. And he was at the wrong time, the wrong place, said the wrong things. And, well, you know, he got off of Apatros, but wound up to be the guy that brought the Brotherhood of Darkness to its knees and reformed the Sith Order completely. I mean, Bane, he learned to understand that the origins of the Sith were uh, selfishness. I mean, passion, strength, power, victory, in oneself, you know, not brotherhood, not unity, but Path of Destruction, I'm going to have to say, book one of the Bane trilogy, A+, plus, fantastic book, 
uh, Drew Carpation, definitely one of the best authors out there in Star Wars. I highly recommend that you pick up this book. Uh, it's been reprinted in a beautiful cover. Uh, get this book and read it. Jumping into the next review, we have Star Wars Shatterpoint, written by New York Times best-selling author Matthew Stover. Now, this book takes place during the rise of the Empire era, about 22 years before the events of A New Hope. Now, Mace Windu, he's meeting with Chancellor Palpatine to discuss the damning evidence that places Council Member Depa Balaba, which was Master Windu's former Padawan, at the scene of a violent massacre. Depa Balaba is on the planet Haroon Kal, which is actually Mace Windu's home world. Now, she is there to train natives how to fight as a guerrilla resistance force against the separatists that have occupied the planet. Now, like I said, evidence was found at a massacre that places Depa Balaba at the scene of the crime, so it appears that she may have actually drifted off into the dark side. Uh, she blames her former master, Mace Windu, for being on Harun Kal. So Mace Windu, he's going to take it upon himself to go to Harun Kal, find Depa Balaba, and investigate this massacre to see if she has indeed drifted into the dark side. Harun Kal is a very dangerous place. It's chaotic. It's just a war zone. Mace Windu, when he goes there, he's not only got to be concerned with the Republic versus the Separatists, but the war going on between the natives, the uh, the Balawai and the Koronai, they're facing off against each other in this long-time war called the Summertime War. So Mace, he's challenged by the natives. He's pushed to his limits in this action-packed, expanded universe story. When Mace Windu arrives on the jungle planet of Harun Kal, he's not only got to worry about troopers with blasters, killer insects, other creatures, but the darkness creeping up within himself. It's a very dangerous jungle. Uh, Matthew Stover gives Windu a very unique force ability called Shatterpoint Vision, where he can see fractures or weaknesses in events and people and how they can affect situations. It's a very interesting thing. We have a very interesting villain in this story, Carvaster. He's like a witch doctor to the natives. He's a very mysterious and deadly man. He is the force. He's, uh, like, he moves around like he's part of the jungle. Very, very interesting guy. Uh, but overall, Matthew Stover did a great job with the dialogue of the book. The plot, interesting. The ending of the book was great for me. The, it does close with a little bit of some things open, which might bother some people. I mean, some of it does bother me a little bit, but I, I'm still satisfied with it, if that makes sense. Uh, there is a character that uh, does not fully get closure, but, uh, you know, the tragedy of it, I enjoyed. It worked for me. So I will give Shatterpoint by Matthew Stover a B plus. You need to go pick up this book. You need to read it. You can listen to it. You know, it's got a new unabridged audio book narrated by Sullivan Jones. I, I did listen to that as well. Very good. Fantastic. Very entertaining. So pick up this book. Now let's move on to the next segment, a discussion, a spoiler discussion of Shatterpoint. All right. Now with me to talk about Shatterpoint, the recent reprint written by Matthew Stover, also received an audio book uh, narrated by Sullivan Jones, unabridged. It's beautiful. Here we have from the Legends podcast, we have Jeremy. Hello. And... We also have, from Red 5 Reviews, Adam. How's it going? So, guys, how happy are you that uh, we got some reprints of some Expanded Universe books? Go ahead, Jeremy. What do you think? This is, this is surreal. For one thing, I wanted to point something out here. When Matthew was starting out, he jumped on the Legends podcast and we talked about Jindy Tartoski's Clone Wars. And specifically, we talked about the Mace Windu chapters of that. And now here I am debuting on the Tuscan Reader. We're talking about Shatterpoint. <laughs> We've yeah, come full circle. Crazy. Um, exactly. I will say this. I was excited that we were going to get the Essential Legends collection. I was confused, though. So we got Heir to the Empire, of course, like the quintessential EU book. We got Path of Destruction because, you know, you need to get the Old Republic fans on board, and they picked the best one to do that with. But then they picked Shatterpoint, and mm -hmm. I thought about it uh, because this was the only one I had never finished before. I'd started Shatterpoint and just given up on it. I'll do that sometimes where I'll take a taste of a few books and then I'll just pick one and then abandon the rest for a time. <laughs> yeah. But this, this, it got me thinking for through this uh, uh, reread why. 
And it dawned on me. This is the best Clone Wars novel out there. And it's a great okay. jumping on point if you want to get into the Clone War because it's way early on in the war. Adam, what, what are you, you have any thoughts that uh, right up front about this book? It was better than I thought it was going to be. However, I still, unfortunately, wasn't a fan of it. Oh. We can okay. get into it. Let's get yeah, into it. Let's do it. By the way, spoilers. This is a spoiler oh, yeah. discussion. We're going to get into this book. If you haven't read it, hit pause, go read it or listen to it, and then you can come back and hit play. Um, we'll be here. Uh, so you guys want to take the floor and tell me, go ahead, take it away. Spoilers. What did you hate about it, Adam? Well, you see, I liked the beginning of it. I thought it was like we got... It was a great intro. Like there were some moments where I was like really like enjoying it. Like there was like this funny part where, you know, these people gang up on Mace Windu while he's in the shower, and he's just like, "I can tell what you're thinking," and they're all wrong. Like first, you think that just because you're on, like on just that note, you, go ahead. Yeah, on that note, he he's counting off the reasons, and number the reason number one, and it even says in the book that he's counting the fingers the ring finger, the index finger, and then there's only one middle finger sticking up at these guys. I thought that was kind of silly. It took me out yeah. of the book for a second. He's flipping these guys off because they're bullies. Continue, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. It was just I just thought it was funny. He's just like, I can tell what you're thinking, and they're all wrong. It's just like, one, you think that just because you're armed that you have the advantage of me, but you're wrong. You think that I'm not going to stand up to you because I'm naked, and you're wrong, <laughs> and you yeah. think that you're going <laughs> to... But, and, you know, it was just... It was really... I mean, like like I said, it had a really cool, strong ending. I think that they, you know, had a good – Matthew Stover had a good start. It just – I don't know. It's just near the last half of the book, I was just, like, losing interest in it. I thought that Mace Windu at one point was a little conceited a couple of times, but I do understand where he's coming from. Like, there was this moment where he was saying that, like, like when someone just calls him Mace or Windu, and he's just like, that's Master Windu to you. And he's just like <laughs> – it's like I worked really hard to earn that title and I worked really hard to keep it. At one point, you know, I was uh, uh, I was like, OK, I, I don't know. That kind of that doesn't seem like something a Jedi would would do necessarily. But I know that Mace is a little bit different than most Jedis. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, there is uh, I did like it did show like how truly awesome Mace Windu is. And I'll give it. I'll give the book that, like, you know, it showed that even though there's, like, a moment where you think that he's defeated, like, this guy, uh, Carl v Vastar, I'm terrible at pronouncing Car Vastar. Car Vastar, yeah. Like, there was a time where you think that this guy, like, completely broken and defeated Mace Windu, but really, you get the sense that, like, he's actually playing him. He's actually got the upper hand the whole time. He's just, like... And I thought that, that he's like a brilliant, he's a brilliant strategist and everything. He's very in intelligent. And, you know, I thought that that was really cool that, you know, we actually got a better look at Mace Windu in this book than we did in the movies. So, but mm -hmm. it's just, I wasn't just a big fan of the story entirely. It's a dark story. Oh, yeah. It's very unpleasant. Um, and that was one of the things I knew going into this because the whole thing with the clone war before Dave Filoni took over and did his children's show. That was very much a child show, which at me fanboys, <laughs> it was for children. It's very much for children. <laughs> I agree. 100%. Uh, um, this, the clone wars were dark stories uh specifically the republic comics which was the which was lucasfilm's primary primary focus believe it or not then Gigi tartowski's clone wars that was the main focus of the clone war story was that and it's the better stories if i'm going to be honest um because I'm not a fan of clone wars novels i think most of them are one off garbage um, with yeah. the exception of, I think Labyrinth of Evil is the best, but that's the beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. um, Shatterpoint's good, I will say that. I'm not a huge Matthew Stover fan. This is 
on the record. This is one of his better books. Yeah, I, um, I hear that he's he's overrated mostly. I hear a lot of people giving him so much praise. He's the best Star Wars author out there. I mean, personally, he's a very creative human being. I will give him that. But when he gets into the later part of this book, where it's war, continuous battle, war, that's honestly something that that is adult that I can't say on here. But um, he gets into every gun and everything, and I hate when he does that. He does it. Uh, he does it more so in Luke Skywalker and the Shadows of Mindor. He opens with that, and it's just like. Why? Like, if I wanted to know how all these uh, weapons uh, worked, I just go into the new essential guide for weapons and technology. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. That's the part like, that when we talked about this when we were reading it, I was like, yeah, a little bit too much action. You're like, Star Wars? It's like, yeah, just wait. You just wait. Yeah. I didn't, oh, I didn't just... realize. Um, because I think this was his second book. Um, he wrote a new Jedi Order book called Traitor, which I think is his best book. It's his shortest book by far. And he's a long-winded writer, which I typically don't have a problem with. But when it gets into all the tech and all that stuff, it's like not interesting. But the hmm. build-up to this is incredible. And oh, yeah. just, uh, just can you imagine if they had sent any other Jedi into this? They would have died, except for yeah. Yoda. Well, yeah, yeah. But yeah, see, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Send Anakin into this. Be a goner. Well, actually, Palpatine would have got him out of it, like he did, like any time Anakin was in trouble. Exactly. Palpatine yeah. pulls strings yeah. to get him out. Um, but it's interesting. Uh, Depa Balaba is what uh, the reason that uh, Mace Windu is sent in, and it talks a little bit about. Uh, him training Depa, not as much as I thought there was going to be, because there was an established canon. He does reference, I believe it's the story arc called Emissaries to Malastar. With uh, he, uh, there's a bunch of act guards they rescue in that, not act guards, but acts. Uh, the creatures, the like wolf creatures, they rescue yep. a bunch of them. Yep, yep, and take them home from uh, this hut who keeps them as like pets to eat people. <laughs> um, but like there's there's some weird references in here I noticed this immediately and I don't think either of you did there's a there's a Yuzen Vong reference yeah I didn't know that um, I didn't I didn't catch on to it I'm either go, I'm going to get into this because a lot of people aren't probably going to get this if they're new into it Mace Windu has a dream of Coruscant being taken over by and terraformed by alien ships. It's very much when the Vong take Coruscant. And wow. he has a vision of it and doesn't realize it. Wow, okay. And uh, I I literally read that, and I, 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 I'm good friends with Matt Wilkins. I, we, we all are. And I, I'm like, Matt, 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 Matt. You got <laughs> There's a there's a new Jedi Order reference in Shatterpoint, and he's like, "What?" <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> well, what I was gonna say was though, like that was part of the thing that kind of uh, killed it for me, though. It was just like it got too continuously predictable. Like, just like there'd be fighting, and then Mace Windu would like surrender, and then there'd be fighting, and then he would like surrender again. Like I just noticed that a couple of times, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. and so that, like I said, I. I thought they it had a great potential for a good story. I just don't think that the story itself was executed very well, in my opinion. But um, like I said, Matthew Stover, I think, is um, he has definitely written some great Star Wars books. Like I read his novelization to Revenge of the Sith recently. I thought that that was great, honestly. I, disagree. I don't like Revenge of the Sith. I you like don't... this better than Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is the most uh, pretentious movie novelization I have ever read. This is well, Anakin now. And then, that's, <laughs> this yeah, they, yeah, they've been doing... I've noticed that some of these books, like uh, these Legends books, have like that... Uh, like where it shows like this is Anakin and Obi-Wan. This is what they're thinking. And then like 
in this novel, Shatterpoint, there's like from the diary of Mace Windu, and then in Kenobi, we have like the meditation thoughts and everything. Like I've noticed, like that's like they. See, that, that, that's the you're, you just referenced the only three times that really happens. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I haven't read most of the other books, so uh, I'm still like working my way through them. So um, well. I'm glad to know I that mean, that doesn't that doesn't take a uh, part in the, the other books. Yeah, I think Yoda Dark Rendezvous, which is the only Yoda novel where he's the main character, is a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. But I don't like the diary segments in this. It's done a lot better in Kenobi. It's like John Jackson Miller read Shatterpoint. It's like I could do this a little better and do less of it. Well, when you find out though, like what the uh, diary of uh, Mace Windu is actually intended for at the end, you're just like, oh. But like with Kenobi, though, it was a little bit more. It had a purpose. He was trying to reach out to, you know, Qui Gon. Spoilers for that. If you haven't yeah. read it. But, but in this one, it's just like it was like he had like this message for to pass on to Luke Skywalker as like the chosen one, bringing balance. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that sucks. You know. <laughs> so I enjoy the book. The first half, fantastic. Second half, eh, a lot of stuff went over my head. Didn't care for it. Um, I kept switching back and forth between actually reading the book and listening to the audiobook, which was narrated by Sullivan Jones. It's awesome. Recommend that you listen to it. If you're into audiobooks, it's unabridged, so it's the entire book. Uh, I loved how the book starts off with uh, Mace Windu and Yoda going into Palpatine's office, and they, there's like a moment of uh, time where they're just by themselves looking around at the office, looking at the decorations and stuff, and they start reminiscing about uh, Chancellor Valorum. I thought that was a cool little, you know, flashback to a more peaceful time for a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, yeah. oh, it's cool. He's like, oh, I, I never thought we'd ever hear about Chancellor Val Valorum ever again. But I think uh, he's dead at this point in the timeline. I think because in the Filoni's Clone Wars, I do believe there's a contradiction with him showing up. I think he's dead um, before Attack of the Clones. No, but no. I could be wrong. That's been that's in the going back in the way back machine there. Oh yeah, well, we gotta do some research. Find out, Jeremy. You could come back and mm -hmm. uh, confirm or deny. I'm 100 percent not doing that because I'm nice. lazy. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hey, we also have Windu recommending. He said, "Oh Yoda, you'd be a great, you'd be a great uh, chancellor." And Yoda's like, yeah, yeah. Force visions, force visions would be too much of a burden, you know. The the road that leads to uh, chaos, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't want to deal with that that burden. Which you know, a, a Jedi, a powerful Jedi, probably turn out just the same. You know, they'd crave control. Well, nothing the, would ever the, get that's done. That's not the Jedi way to rule like no. that. No, which is weird coming from from Mace Windu, anyway. Like, oh, Yoda, mm -hmm. you'd be a great chancellor. It's like, I don't know that he would well, actually say it, that. Well, he's he's showing that he still has stuff to learn. Yeah. And that yes, Yoda's yes, still true. his teacher, you know? that's yeah. And that's something throughout this book is he goes to Yoda's guidance a lot. Yeah. I and did, Mace Windu's uh, basically Yoda's number two. Yeah. When it comes to the council. Kind of on right, that man. note. I did uh I did really like that in this novel it did show that like there are some Jedi that like question them like not just like Anakin or anything like that. It like cause you can definitely tell like uh Mace Windu is like putting a lot of thought into like am I doing the right thing? Like am I mm -hmm. you know, and I really did appreciate that because you know, like cause most of the other Jedi I've seen, like they're very set in their ways. And Mace Windu, I can tell, is just like he's more open minded than most other Jedi's. And I did appreciate reading about that. Yeah. yeah but it's... Gotten... Oh, go go for it. I would say they, they don't really fight much. You know what I mean? They learn all these things, defenses, they're supposed to keep peace in the galaxy, but they haven't experienced war. And Mace Windu, he's like already got this PTSD from not assassinating or just taking out Count Dooku when he had the chance. He's living well, with that nightmare. Let's get into Mace Windu's power, and that is what the the title is. It's Shatter the title is, Yeah, and Shatter the Shatter points are a rare force ability to see different outcomes in time and how it will be affected. 
And Mace mm-hmm. Windu can naturally see this when other Jedi can't. Yeah. It's and... very complicated to explain. Matthew Stover did a great job explaining it. But... Yes, he did. <laughs> I mean, he came up with it. Yeah. <laughs> so he better yeah. Yeah. explain it. Um, but he he keeps live, dreaming about Geonosis. And what if he had killed Dooku and Jango Fett when he first confronted them? Yeah, and if that evil act, uh, which would he wouldn't have been a Jedi anymore, just straight up murdering people, uh, would have saved millions, and that's yeah. it's an interesting thing, and it's something he's dealing with. It doesn't help that Depa Balaba, his former Padawan and another council member, has kind of not quite kind of fall into the dark side but in a peculiar way where she's teamed up with these rebels the uh yeah the, the Viet militia Kong. Man. yeah they're, they're definitely Viet Cong, <laughs> um just by how they are and uh the they're the corns and then the uh Balawites are the opposing force which would have been like america and France and stuff. It's there's a lot of allegories to the Vietnam War in this. Oh yeah, definitely, which, definitely which Vietnam. Is, yeah. Harun Cal, the planet, is definitely a forced jungle. Constantly, the people at war. It's like a civil war going on within the planet. And then you got these outside forces coming in too. People fighting everybody. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's 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 just a it's a weird um, it's a weird thing. Uh, we haven't even gotten into Nick Rostu yet. Because I'm curious what you all thought of him, who's the other main character of this, who's another Corin, but yeah. he's been removed from the Corin kind of and grew up in the cities. Because the Corin are a sort of they're sort of like farmers and they're they live off the land and they're one with the jungle. Whereas the Balawites like to log the jungle because the uh the trees, the wood is worth a lot of money. So you have a lot mm-hmm. of prospectors coming in, and it's caused the civil war, which is called the Summertime War, yeah. which has literally just ruined these people. And yeah, yeah, and like, place... I think what you were trying to say earlier, you were saying Depo Balabo came in to help train the militia, the Koronai, mm-hmm. to fight against the uh, separatists, but yeah, the, they're all the separatists... fighting each other. Yeah, the separatists are uh, were giving are giving the uh, the Balawai weapons, weapons. because yeah. their droids don't handle the jungle well because technology doesn't work well in the jungle. So they it's people against people in there, which is interesting. It's very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and the Republic went there, and what we think is they sent the separatists packing. And then left, but um I keep wanting to call her Barris Ophi, but that's the wrong Jedi. Uh <laughs> Depa Balaba um stayed because she thought it was her duty. But there's this there's this being um named Carvaster, who is the last surviving Windu. So he and Mace Windu are sort of related, and he is this force being it's like a witch doctor is what they i think they yeah. explained it as and he is just darkness he is the darkness of the jungle personified he's yeah. become one with it he's not quite human anymore he yeah doesn't, they were he can't uh... speak but he speaks through the force and he growls yeah, yeah they were yeah the narrator was he did a pretty good job, like you know, each voice he'd say he had like that growl or something like that. Like but um yeah, you can definitely tell like listening to the audiobook, like this guy's trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's bad. He calls Mace Windu his Doshalo, which is like his brother, and Mace Windu doesn't like that because Mace Windu doesn't have really much of a feeling for the Windus because he was an orphan and the Jedi took him. And he only really remembers the temple, and he's only been to the back to his home world once prior to this. It's been like yeah, 30 he, years. Yeah, he had memories of the place. Just like, mm. you know, a couple of little memories from Harun Kao. 
but uh, there we go. That's what it's called. Harum cow. Yeah, yeah. I knew it's a room Nick, something, but I yeah, a room cow. Uh, Nick, though that the side character, the other main character, mm-hmm. I thought he was okay. Came off a little bit goofy sometimes, especially yeah. towards the end. In the like beginning, he was fine. In the end, he yeah, just it, kind of turned ditzy and. Uh, he, you know, who he reminded me of Short so, Round from Temple of Doom. Oh my Where's gosh! Short <laughs> Round's jokes in the beginning kind of work <laughs> to lighten it up, but the story gets so dark that they don't. The Nick Nick Ross too feels out of place. I was just say, what did you guys think about Mace Windu wielding two lightsabers in battle? He did that a couple times. Yeah, he had. Uh, it was Depa Balaba's green one, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it's just it's hard to see him like I know originally in like the uh, Jedi Power Battles PS1 game, uh, he had like a blue one, and that's what yes, he was originally he supposed. He was originally supposed to have one, but then I know the story behind it, like where Samuel L. Jackson was just like, "Hey, can I have a purple lightsaber?" and like, like because that's my favorite color. And um, and then like I, I was talking to a friend of mine at work the other day about this. This is like how he just made one request. For a different colored light cell, and that creates like this whole lore behind it now about like the meaning to have a purple lightsaber. And honestly, it's just like when you see a purple lightsaber, you immediately think Mace, Wind- Mace Windu. And so, like, with him, like, reading, uh, they had a green one, it was a little, I know he still had his purple one, but like, it was still like a little, like, like, okay, yeah, um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm, uh, how I feel about um, like you had ha- not having a purple lightsaber completely, you know. But you know, I thought overall it was okay. Yeah, the militiamen they get murdered, slaughtered in the woods. Was that was mm-hmm. that too brutal for you, Jeremy? It was a little when they murder when Carvaster murders the child. He murders the teenager. That was a little much. Um, you gotta understand. I'm used to like. Death Troopers and Red Harvest, the zombie Star Wars books. Like, right. not a lot phases me. And the new canon so graphic at times. And uh, that, like, I, this felt tame for most of it, except for the yeah. child murder. I could do without that. That was a little much. Fever wasps were horrifying creatures that laid their eggs inside the bodies. Oh yeah, but that's not brought up much. There's the, there's a plot point of that, and then it disappears. It's yeah, there's a, a couple characters died from it, and I think what didn't he have to take them out of the misery, like cut off their head or something? He had to kill one of them. Yeah. And then I thought that a couple people got uh, infested by them, but then I can't remember they if got they cured. just they got cured. They got cured. See, there's some yeah. There's some things that I I don't remember. That happened in this story. I think that's you know that's I'm kind of that's okay because that's out. glossed over. That's like a that's not a good point of the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's second half, war, constant fighting. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been nice. Um, there's a point where it feels like there's going to be a climax between uh, Carvaster and Mace Windu, and yeah. then there, you realize there's another four hours of the audio book. <laughs> And you're like, yeah. oh, I guess we're continuing from here. What are your thoughts on Depa? Like, before we get to the end, the what happens in the very end, what did, what did you think about her storyline, her point in this story? Did it pay off for you? Does it, was it, what are your thoughts? Uh, it doesn't pay off for me at all. No? Um, it's more, to me, the book's more of a Mace Windu character study than anything else. She's just the catalyst to get him there, and she's the weakest point of the story. Um, okay. She's like, I'm so sick, and uh, I, I, I'm i brainwashed. And in fact, yeah. their fight at the end. She yeah. Did. Although yeah, it, it was agree. fascinating to see how much damage Mace Windu can take and still live through it. Yeah, he should have been dead, to be honest. A uh, fairy. That was insane. Well, I wasn't really invested too much in Depa Balaba, honestly. And, you know, this one of the things that I will caution readers about, like, you know, is this, it's just, you know, the, but this being like the first in the Clone Wars series, like, 
you've seen the movies, you know what happens to Mace Windu. So it's just that's probably that's one reason that like I was just like not really invested in her because I was just like, well, okay, I know that somehow you know things you know like Mace is gonna get out of this somehow and like or I didn't like Depa Balaba is gonna either get captured or she's gonna get killed or whichever. So it's just more like. Um, yeah, that was just like that was just like I, I because of that I just hadn't really no, didn't really invest too much in Depa Balava, so I was just kind of more like okay, whatever happens happens, you know. I I didn't care for this character. Mm. She had I don't of course I didn't know anything about her really going into this book. Uh, I was happy with the way that it turned out, which I guess we can just talk about it. Uh, she's just crazy. She was mad. She survives at the end, which but I didn't like. I wish I like they would have just. All. I wish they would have killed her. Because they just don't kill her off. As far as I know, she doesn't show back up in the EU. I don't yeah, think I so kinda, either. I was wondering if about Matthew that. Stover had like written a post Revenge of the Sith story and she was uh, an inquisitor. That would have been interesting, but there's no yeah. mention of her being an inquisitor. Same with Car Vaster in particular. Can you imagine him as an inquisitor? Oh wow, yeah. He'd been creepy. Hey. But he yeah. would have been hard to control. I mean, I, the thing with Depa, I did like that it wasn't a happy ending, though. I like that, but well, I no, do wish that she would have just. I wish I wish she would have just died, though. You know, mm. it's it's like certain books in the past. We get uh, a great story, but the ending is just left wide open. You're like, but we don't get any more of that ever again. But anything else you guys want to add? Any other thoughts with Shatterpoint? Well, I mean. I didn't, even though I didn't care for it, um, you know, if you're a fan of Mace Windu, I'd still recommend, you know, give it a shot. And, you know, also if you like want to make your way through like the Legends books, you know, especially since they're reprinting them, yes, please, you know, buy it, read it and everything because, you know, let them know that we want more reprints of the Legends books. So, yeah. And it's awesome that they gave us an audiobook for it. And I know the question I was going to ask, but uh, Jeremy, you already kind of answered it, um, was do you, guys think believe that this is an essential expanded universe book oh like, is it is worthy essential well of course but i'm talking about these reprints of like right off the bat like this of all if they're being selected because we still don't know if what they're going to be reprinting you know what i mean if like say ruins of dantooine horrible cover Definitely needs a reprint. Okay. Yeah, it does. Is the story what I'm trying to say is the story worthy of you know the recognition of like, hey, look at this. It's out there. Like I if Jedi. A lot of people hate if, that. Yeah, that's a garbage book. You know what um, I mean? I'm trying to say like a Shadows of Mindor, the which uh, one is it essential? Like, yes, please I give me that one now. If you're so this reminds me I, I didn't talk about this, but I meant to talk about this. Back at, when Star Wars turned 30, Dark Horse did a series of hardcovers called the 30th Anniversary Collection. And they went from the Freedom Nat Uprising to Legacy Volume 1. It was random stories. And a bunch of them made no sense on why they got put in hardcover. If you are to, it was just to pick different eras of Star Wars. If you're going to pick a Clone Wars novel, then yeah, that or Labyrinth of Evil. Like one of those okay. two. Don't don't put reprint the Cestus Deception, although you should because it's way <laughs> out of print. But like first, like no. Um I, I think this was kind of a diversity pick. Uh you want to pick a, a minority character. It's it's a great choice for that. It's honestly probably one of the best choices, because what else would they have done? Knight Errant with Kara Holt? No one would have bought that. No. <laughs> that would have been awful. No, they wouldn't. That would have been- yeah. Very poor yeah. choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this is a good, solid book. Um, yeah, it's I, it's just so fascinating to see it next to Air of the Empire and Path of Destruction. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say though, like I think you were kind of onto something, Jeremy, about like it's in a like being the first book in a Clone Wars section. You know, like I could see why that, like, yes, that would be uh, like an essential. Um, Because, like, we also got, like, Heir to the Empire, which was, like, the first, you know, story post uh, Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So obviously, yes. And then Darth Bane, because, you know, Darth Bane, you know, was very essential because, like, you know, he established the rule of two and the Sith and everything. Uh, and obviously, yes, the they're coming out with the X-Wing Rogue Squadron books uh, reprints. Mm-hmm. So, um, so to answer the question, yeah, I would consider it essential, like, to be reprinted. Um, it's also you know, the best cover. I was going to say, I do like the cover. Um, I love the cover because cover. the original it's, cover kind of sucks. It's not yes, my favorite, yes. but I, I, I'll give yeah, the original cover is not the greatest. Uh, I do like the new one. Uh, it's not my favorite, but um, I do like it. Uh, I think it's essential because it's Mace Windu. I like Mace Windu, and I always wanted to have more content with Mace Windu. I enjoyed the story, mostly. The first half, for sure. The ending, I thought, was fine. I like the tragedy of it. So, yes, essential in my book, too. And it being the first Clone Wars book that I've read, I haven't read any other Clone Wars stories. In fact, in in the current timeline that I'm reading, I need to start Attack of the Clones. That's my next EU book that I need to to read in the timeline. What other book do you think should be printed in the like Wave 3? What book do you want to see reprinted? In wave Darth three, Bull, I guess, Darth which is okay. going to be reprinted. It was supposed to be in wave two, but they've pushed it back. I'm not sure. Okay. I think it was to get Last Command out with Dark Force Rising. You know, it would be a great choice. Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Splinter of the Mind's <laughs> Eye would be awesome. Yes, the original that, EU uh, novel. Yeah, yeah that, that's an essential one right there for sure. I uh, mean, I'm going to go ahead. There is no audio book for it. Period. Well, there needs to be. That's that's what's great about these reprints is they're picking some that don't have audiobooks and they're putting them out there, you know, unabridged. I agree, Darth Plagueis. Uh, I'm going to throw out two other options, uh, one of which, because I like the story, the Han Solo trilogy by A.C. Crispin. I think uh, those covers would look mm-hmm. kind of cool. This is, just, this is just because I'm curious how I would see how it look uh, Revan. I would love to see what you said, Adam, if they redid the Han Solo trilogy, the AC Crispin stuff, that would be awesome. Uh, even Kenobi. Kenobi needs to be that. Uh, hopefully Wave 3. Plagueis, Han Solo, Paradise Snare, and uh, Kenobi. That would be that'd be a beautiful set right there. But before we head out of here, do you guys have anything else you want to say about Shatterpoint? Are you all good? No, good. I'm good. So, okay. Well, everybody can find Jeremy over at the Legends Podcast, wherever you can find podcasts. Yes. And over there, you got Adam with Red 5 Reviews over there on YouTube, reviewing Star Wars books. Uh, anywhere else anybody could find you that you would like to talk about? Bryant VRM. That's my other channel. Uh, also, Paper Movies. Yeah. Paper movies. Uh, and I'm on Stupid Chainsaw Productions. So. Heck yeah. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining me in this discussion of Shatterpoint. May the Force be yeah, with thank- you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, that was a fun discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun. Hopefully you did too. The next discussion that I would like to get into is Rogue Squadron, book one of the X-Wing series. So look forward to that in September. I'm going to try to get some folks on here to talk about that book. I've never experienced the X-Wing series, so I'm glad that the Essential Legends collection is going to have book one in September to read and listen to if you'd rather listen to it, narrated by Mark Thompson, which we talked about earlier in this episode. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for a bigger discussion, spoiler heavy discussion of Rogue Squadron in the future. Guys, thanks so much for listening. If you would like to watch this stuff instead, there is a YouTube channel where I've videoed this entire episode. There's going to be clip outs from it on the YouTube channel, Tuscan Reader. Check me out on Twitter at Tuscan Reader Podcast. So it's Time to wrap this up like a dirty little Tuscan Raider and wander off into the desert until the next episode. Yep, that's the outro that I've got. The only one that uh, I could think of. So, unless you've got better, let me know. Hit me up on the, the Twitter at Tuscan Reader Podcast. And guys, may the Force be with you. And happy reading.